Well, the ravens got the garden. If you have been keeping up with our gardening journey, you'll know that we've been learning the ins and outs of gardening in the Japanese countryside for the last year and a half. Last month, we had a successful harvest and our garden thrived. Unfortunately, we are back to trial and error mode this July. The ravens devoured our tomatoes, eggplant, and watermelon. But luckily, they didn't seem interested in the cucumbers and dill we planted to make our own dill pickles. We do prefer the extra crunchy, slightly spicy variety that seems to be missing from the shelves of our grocery store. We went for this straightforward recipe with cucumbers, garlic, dill, togarashi Japanese chili pepper, all soaked in a salt brine. The pickles are ready to serve after letting them ferment for a week. In case you're new to this channel, I'm Mika, and this is Jesse. We're also welcomed with our newest addition to the household, Pancake, who's been settling in nicely with us since we picked him up in April. We live in the Japanese countryside in an Akia house, one of the many abandoned and vacant houses in Japan. July is notoriously hot and humid in Japan. This month was especially wet and rainy. Despite the heat, we had a friend visit us during this month. We got a chance to offer our guests a glimpse into country life in the summer, like enjoying barbecue dinners, swimming, and of course, an introduction to the summer critters. During a sunny day, we visited one of the many beaches along the Kochi coastline. We're just far enough south to swim among coral reef and tropical fish. Swimming in those waters can make a trip to Japan a bit more tolerable during its hottest months. The beach time also gave Pancake his first taste of water play, a concept he still hasn't quite figured out yet. Speaking of Pancake, our little pup of four months is settling nicely in his new country home. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> he quickly got used to the weight of his leash during our walks and found his voice to get our attention. Like most puppies, he's full of energy, keeping us on our toes while we do our country chores. Seems like helping is one of his favorite things to do. He likes to sit on the edge of the driveway and watch the neighbors. He's quite the little watchdog. With the extreme heat peaking in midday, 
The best times to spend outside are early morning and evenings. While we primarily cook at home, there are times when we crave the convenience of an easy dinner. And with our overpicked raven garden, nothing feels more like a treat than a platter of sushi from the grocery store, one of our many luxuries we indulge in while living in Japan. This month, we're back in Tokushima Prefecture to Heart Tokushima, the shelter where we found our pancake for his much needed neutering procedure. Heart Tokushima was founded in 2006 by a fellow Canadian named Susan Mercer and is one of the few no kill shelters on the island. They, they love each other, but they're yeah. like my, my boys. <laughs> This one's bigger than Pan. Yeah. He's a big guy. The biggest. Yeah. His head is bigger. Um, you really have to be careful. Honestly, it was a little nerve wracking for us to leave Pancake for his procedure. It's our first time letting him go through something like this. Hey, little critters. God, I wish I could take them all. Thankfully, we had the company of other dogs, including Pancake's three siblings, to keep us company. It's run solely on volunteer basis and funded through donations, focusing on rescuing, caring for, and rehoming stray and neglected animals. Despite other clinics being closer, we appreciate the affordable neutering services that Heart Tokushima offers their cats and dogs. Pancake's really happy. Yeah, yeah. Being my host, and then she comes back, then I have to. She's trying to interact. Veterinarians from all over Japan, including Nagoya, even all the way from Hokkaido, volunteer regularly at Heart Tokushima to help provide low-cost neutering services. Hey! 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 If you're curious about any of the dogs in the video, you can check out the Heart Tokushima website for the full list of animals up for adoption. If you'd like to donate, you can find a link in my bio and video. All donations goes towards food, bedding, and medication for the animals. And if you're a resident of Japan, consider adopting a furry friend in need of a loving home. We hope that Pancake's procedure will inspire others to support the amazing work that Heart Tokushima is doing. Despite the hot and humid summer months in Japan, there are still compelling reasons to visit during this time. And we cannot talk about summer in Japan without mentioning their summer festivals. the most exciting things about summer in Japan is the colorful festivals called Matsuri. There are plenty to see on Shikoku Island to celebrate the summer festivities. This year we went to Shimanto City for its summer dance festival. I was especially excited to see its highlight, the Shimanto Lantern Parade. Whoa! 
As the hottest month of the year bears down on us, our thoughts are moving towards the challenges of another typhoon season. Every month brings a new set of challenges, but within those challenges are lessons. And as we learn, we can enjoy the odd triumph and share a hard-earned dew pickle. <laughs> if you haven't already, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more glimpses into our life in the rural countryside of Japan. See you next time. Bye.